Hey guys, I'm Ted, here to give you another fast fact, and for today's fast fact, we'll talk about Washington and slavery. Now, George Washington uh, had a rather unique sort of legacy with slavery. He was a Virginia um, aristocrat. He was a member of the very creme de la creme of the Virginian um, aristocracy, of the Virginian, of Virginian high society. Uh, During his lifetime, especially his time as a national figure, his time as president, he had a number of slaves run away from his plantations, um, run, run away from his service, particularly in the North, when the capital was in the North and he was president. Uh, and Washington, you know, initially against the advice of Hamilton, attempted to hire slave catchers to go out there and capture his runaway slaves. He did so on a number of occasions. Uh, there was the affair of Hercules. There was the um, the Oni uh, the Oni Judge incident in which he attempted, under numerous uh, on numerous occasions, attempted to use their their mothers in particular and their siblings and other family members and friends uh, who were still at Mount Vernon. He attempted to use them as um, to sort of lure them back into. Uh, lured them back into slavery, saying that, hey, I understand why you did it, uh, but your poor mama, she misses you, she misses you, come and see your mama. Um, trying to emotionally blackmail them into uh, submitting to slavery. Uh, they never did. Um, and when that failed, he simply sent out uh, slave catchers. He attempted to abduct them to bring them back in. And in a very... Uh, in a very odd sequence of events, Washington actually exchanged letters with Hercules or Hercules, in which he, you know, attempted to uh, to uh, lure him back someplace at a neutral site. And Hercules said, "Well, if you ever want to see me, you can come right here where I'm good and free. If you ever want to see me, and if you want my mother to see me." If my mother wants to see me, she can come up here too, where I'm good and free. I I'm pretty sure she'd like to see me good and free than enslaved. Um, but but uh, but those embarrassments, those public embarrassments aside, um, Washington did something uh, that not a, not a lot of other slave owners were really willing to do. He emancipated his slaves. Now, he only did so in his will uh, after his death. Uh, and after the death of his wife, his slaves were to be emancipated. He he did free one slave. He did free one slave outright, um, giving him the option of freedom then and there, or to remain in service, to remain uh, in bondage. Um, it was sort of a lopsided. It was sort of an unequal uh, choice. Uh, it was either freedom and living. In uh, in Africa, in the uh, early um, resettlement uh, colony in Africa, or slavery, you know, with the family, but still living with them as a slave and still, you know, being forced to do work on the plantation. Uh, but Washington, he did free his slaves. He did something that no other uh, politician of the era, no other slave owner politician, um, had really been willing to do. He had been a supporter of. Um, uh, abolitionist sentiment in, in the early uh, 1780s and when he died 1799 he stipulated it in his will uh, his slaves it turned out would not have to wait until his wife's death uh, Martha Washington fearing that the slaves now had a, a vested interest in her death freed them quickly she, she, uh, she engineered their freeing uh, the freeing of them uh, in, in her lifetime uh, because she was afraid that they were, uh, uh, I shouldn't laugh, but she was afraid that they were going to kill her if she didn't free them, um, which which may have been a possibility, which may have been something that was really going to happen. Uh, but but there you have it, George Washington and slavery, very um, very very complex uh, topic to sort of dissect. It, it, you really can't under you really can't understate what actually going ahead and freeing your slave means, uh, but you also really can under uh, understate what it means to 
to say that somebody uh, only freed them after his death or the, or uh, after the death of his spouse. But but a personal body servant, um, Will Lee, he was freed uh, outright of Washington's will. So, uh, and Will Lee had perhaps the the most intimate um, knowledge. He had perhaps been the most intimate uh, companion of Washington. He had served uh, Washington throughout the Revolutionary War and well into um, the early portions of his presidency, uh, or um, right about the uh, right right up until the cusp of his presidency during the critical moments of Washington's uh, life. Up until then, Will Lee had been his personal attendant. So him granting Will Lee his freedom outright, even if it was in, uh under, you know, sort of like dubious or like underhanded, uh, in a dubious or underhanded means, um, him, just, the fact that he would simply still do, do that still speaks volumes on, on Washington. And I don't mean to ramble on, but that's our fast fact. Uh, Washington and slavery. Uh, let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you, um, what your opinions on the matter is. Um, and as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I'm Ted, and thank you all for listening.